Now we look at moment of inertia. We saw that already that the moment of inertia of a point mass is m r square where r is the distance from the axis of rotation. So let's do an example on this involving four discrete masses. Let's say we have a a very light rod so that we will ignore its mass and the length is one meter and we have another rod whose length is 30, uh, 60 centimeters so this side is 0.3 meters and this is 0.5 meters 0.3 meters and 0.5 meters and here we have a mass of 2 kilograms and a 2 kilogram mass here and 4 kilograms here and here and we will select an axis so let's select it like this so we have this red colored line so that's the axis we call it a a prime and this thing is going to spin about this axis so it's going to go around this axis what is the moment of inertia so the moment of inertia about the a a prime axis will be the moment of inertia due to about this axis due to each of these four and we add them together so it's sum of m i r i square and i in this case is one to four so let's call this number one two three and four so we'll add them all up so it's going to be m1 r1 square and this will be r1 plus m2 r2 square m3 r3 square and m4 r4 square let's put in these numbers and then something will become clear so m1 is 4 and r1 this is the axis so it's the distance from the axis so it's going to be 0 0.3 m2 is 2 kilograms but r is the distance from the axis to this point and if these masses are very small like they are point masses then the mass is already right on it and the distance from this axis to that mass is zero so this gives us no moment of inertia then m3 is again four kilograms and it's also at 0.3 meters and m4 is again right on the axis so it's going to be zero so well these two just are zeros and when we solve this we get 0 0.72 kilogram meters square so that's the moment of inertia about this axis now instead of this axis if we have an axis that's along this line let's say b b prime so that means that instead of spinning about here it's spinning about here so this is going to come like this then the moment of inertia of bb prime is going to be the same equation again sum of m i r i square and now the distance between the four kilogram and the axis is zero so m1 r1 square is zero so it's going to be m1 times zero square and m2 is two kilograms which is at half a meter square plus m3 is right on the axis so m3 which is 4 times 0 and m4 which is 2 kilograms times 0.5 and when we solve that we get 1.00 kilogram meter square well we could also solve it once again to have about an axis that's perpendicular to it so that the whole thing is spinning like this so the axis is coming out of the page and we call that the axis CC CC prime and then again it's M I R I square and this is going to be in this case um, M1 which is 4 and it's 0.3 meters and M2 is 0.5 meters from the axis so axis is like that so the distance is 0.5 square and this is also 0.3, so it's 4 times 0.3 square plus 
2 times 0.5 squared. And when we solve that, we get 1.72 kilograms meter squared. So it depends on where you have your axis. And I think in the homework, there's a question where the axis is kept somewhere here, in which case the distances would be from the axis. So R is always measured from the axis. Now let's consider a somewhat a different case where it's not a collection of point masses. So it's like a, a loop or a hoop or a ring, something like a bicycle wheel but without the spokes so it's just the just the wheel and it has a certain thickness which has to be small in order for it to qualify to be a ring uh, a thin walled ring or a thin walled cylinder and this distance to the center of that is R and the axis is passing through here so the thing is going to spin clockwise or counterclockwise along like this and now again we have uh, the moment of inertia is the sum of m i r i square but we don't have small masses it's just one big mass so we'll break this up into a number of small masses each of which is a delta m and so there's a large number of them so we can go from i equal 1 to n where n is a big number now each of the m i's are let's assume equal and each of the r i's would be the distance from here to each of these r's and all these distances are equal because it's a circle and this is in the middle so they are all equal to r so when all r the r's are equal we can just take them outside and this becomes m, the delta m from i equals 1 to n. And when we add up all the delta m's, they will just be equal to the mass of this object, or m r squared. So the moment of inertia of the loop is just m r squared. Now, we go to a somewhat more uh, different case so go to page 7 and now we consider a rod so it's a thin rod and we select the axis at its center which is the center of mass this becomes our x direction and this is our y direction and also the axis of rotation. So it's going to spin about this axis. Now, to solve this, we again have the moment of inertia, the sum of m i r i square. But this time, we'll, we will again do the same thing. We break it up into a number of parts and we take one of them and that is dm or delta m We'll just make it dm later. And it's located at x. The whole length is l. So the length from here to here is l by 2, and it's minus l by 2, or another l by 2. Now, in the, in the limit where delta m tends to 0, the moment of inertia becomes the integral of r square dm. So this dm, well, it's written m here, but we get a dm in the limit when delta m tends to zero, it becomes uh, r squared dm. So now we'll uh, do this integration over and uh, uh, over this whole rod. Now we need to write dm in terms of r because we can't integrate r over dm. So we'll take what we call the linear mass density as a lambda okay that's a lambda and this linear mass density is the mass over length so divide the total mass with the total length and you get mass per unit length which is kilogram per meter 
That's the linear mass density. And then the, the delta M would be lambda times delta X, where delta X is, is uh, the distance from here to here. It's hard to show here. Okay, that's going to be delta X. And, well, in the limit, uh, dm would become equal to lambda dx. So we can replace the dm with lambda dx. And the moment of inertia becomes the integral. Now, r in this case is purely in the x direction. There is no y component because it's a thin rod. So we can replace the r with an x square and the dm with lambda dx. Now, lambda is constant because it's a it's a uniform thin rod, okay, not written here, but it's a uniform rod. And so the lambda can be taken outside and it becomes lambda integral x squared dx. And the limits will be from here to here. So this is x equals minus L by two, and this is x equals L by two. So we go from minus L by two to L by two. And this becomes lambda and this becomes x cubed over three minus L by 2 to L by 2, which is lambda by 3, and becomes, first it's L by 2 cube minus of minus L by, uh, L by 2 cubed, which becomes 2, 4, 8. So it becomes lambda over 3, L cubed over 8, minus of, that should be a minus here, a negative with of this here, so it becomes minus uh, three times and another one should become the plus L cubed by eight, which is lambda over three L cubed over four. Now, um, we can replace the lambda with M over L, so this becomes M over L, the three, the L cube and the four. And one of the L's will cancel and this becomes M L square over 12. That's the moment of inertia about, uh, let's call this A, A prime. So the moment of inertia of a rod about its axis passing through the center of mass is M L square over 12. Now, if we want to find the moment of inertia about an axis passing through here, uh, well, right at the edge, which we call B, B prime, if we want to find the moment of inertia about the axis B, B prime, then that would be, um, we'll use the same equation that we have here, 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 we'll just change the limit. So we can start off at this point it's going to be, um, uh, well, we can go all the way up to here. It's going to be lambda x cubed over 3, 0 to L, because it's integrated from here to here now. But it's spinning about this axis. So the integration is from 0 to L. And that becomes lambda by 3 and L cubed. And lambda is M over L, L cubed. And uh, one of them will cancel. It becomes m l square by 3 and that becomes the moment of inertia about b b prime so uh, by shifting from here to here the moment of inertia becomes m l square by from 12 becomes 3 so it becomes 4 times bigger